Hello, welcome. My name is Dr. Cheryl Meyer, and today I'm gonna to teach you about addictions. Three reasons why to give up your addictions. I know we're all like, we wanna give up our addictions, you know? Why wouldn't we? But um, you'll see, you'll see the three reasons um, to give them up. And they'll help you understand why you keep holding on to them. I am a psychologist in my day job and I've been to a week-long advanced Dr. Joe Dispenza uh, retreat thing, not retreat, <laughs> teaching. I've been to a million classes, uh, like so many. Uh, I went to a whole year-long Tony Robbins. You know, all my passion is just, uh, and I went to nine years of graduate school to get my doctorate in psychology. That's that's my training in the back, my background. And I um, follow a spiritual path and I meditate. Um, and this, all of this is just really serious to me so that I bring you the very best, right? All right. So, uh, I, I wrote things down this time because I was looking at how to, anyway, who cares? Um, okay, so the bonus before we get into the three, the three, first, okay, the first one, the first one comes from this book. I was reading Think and Grow Rich because someone else was recommending it. And it was saying, look at this tree. Look at that. <sighs> Always, if you want to know how to get out of any addiction, is get out of the addiction of your mind. This is just a bonus as well. This is from, I took a, uh, so many classes with Eckhart Tolle over the two years that we were inside. And, and then I just took a live one with him. Because I always want the best of the best training. And I don't want to keep running around. And I don't want you to keep running around. So what he said was be really deeply present. Be present. Stop. Just because everybody else is addicted to their mind doesn't mean you ought to be. When you're in your mind all the time, you're trying to control things. It's another mechanism of control. And addictions are a way of control. All right. So this step one, the first one, uh, the reasons to get rid of your addictions or address your addictions instead of them owning you, right? Is uh, someone was recommending, Latoya Okia was recommending this and so I was reading and I got to this part where he was talking about criminologists, criminologists talking to criminals or not, or understanding criminals. And they explained to us that a criminal abhors, they don't like doing crime at first and then they get used to it and then they start to grow a taste for it. It goes in their subconscious. Now this is what happens with lies, right? Just ignore the outer. That's just reflecting how we get to ignore our addictions and not give them attention, you know? Is, um, so one thing I was thinking when I was thinking about making this video, I was thinking you know, we can always make more excuses why why to hold on to our addictions? We say, oh, I need this, I need that. It's filling up this emptiness or whatever. And this is the one thing I can take, okay? And so, the, the thing about Napoleon Hill and, and how our brains grow accustomed to, you know, it's like, if we hate taking something at first, it's like, imagine again, okay? This will be your litmus test, all right? Write this down. <sighs> if you're serious about letting go of your addictions and not letting them own you because they are owning you, would you give it to your 13-year-old brother, your 13-year-old sister, your 13-year-old cousin, your 13-year-old daughter or son? Would you go, hey, you take this. Why don't you take this for your problems? Whatever it is, I'm not judging you, right? Just look at it and say, would you keep offering that to them over and over? Hey, why don't you just smoke this away? Why don't you just drink this away? Why don't you just try to prove yourself on social media more and more and try to get likes and run after other people's approval away? Why don't you just work 15 hours a day to try to go up the corporate ladder so that you can get your worth that way? Why don't you just try to accumulate stuff in your bank account? Or why don't you just try to think everything through? Or why don't you just try to keep taking more men or taking more women or whatever, you know, so that you have more notches on your belt so that you feel like 
you're getting something, you know? And this brings me to, to step two, right? Is um, I was friends with Elliot Smith, this musician that I loved dearly from my heart. And I remember my older brother and I having a conversation after Elliot passed. And I know this just from how Elliot was, and I'm not saying he was perfect. He had lots of flaws, right? But he woke up my consciousness to such a high degree. And it was such a paradox because I couldn't understand how he was more conscious than all of the people I'd ever met in any kind of church, like probably put together, you know what I mean? And so I'd go to Largo on, on Friday night and church on Sunday. And I was just like, I didn't know Largo was where Elliot and I would hang out and talk and just be and listen to John Bryan music. And everyone was just reverent <laughs> about the music, about the music. Because the music comes from the heavenly realms. It does, art does, and it can transform us. It can transform us, you know, sure, probably it can transform us for bad or for whatever, but it can transform us for good. But anyway, my brother was telling me this one thing that Elliot, I don't remember if it's in a lyric, but I just remember how he was with me. You know, he, he protected me in a lot of ways. Um, in some ways, like I got my heart broken by him and with him and through him, but it's, it's okay now. Um, but he said, I don't take something just because I can, you know, just because something's in front of you. Jesus said it this way when he said, you know, it is, it's more difficult for a rich man to go into the kingdom of heaven than for a camel to get through the eye of a needle. There was a gate in Jerusalem called the eye of the needle gate and the camel had to take everything off, everything off, all the packs off in order to get through to the, the great city of, of uh, or the temple of, of, of God, of the divine, you know, that Solomon built, right? Where God used to reside with the Ark of the Covenant. If you understand that, understand it as myth. If you don't understand it as real, it, it, just be present with, with the love in this, right? Is, is if Christ wants all of us, you know, step one in AA and the, and the Alcoholics Anonymous is, I came to believe that a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity. So you don't have, I'm not saying what you have to believe, but if Christ wanted you to have your sanity to re restore to you, it's not gonna be found in addictions. We don't find it in addictions. Addictions are only a temporary solution um, and we're worth a deeper solution. We're de worth a deeper one, right? And so if Christ is always trying to teach you how to regain your sanity, when he says, you know, with man, it, because the disciples say, well, then who can enter the kingdom of God then, you know? With man, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. With God, this is possible, right? So understand that what Elliot was saying to teach us in this about addictions, because he struggled with addictions, was I don't take just because I can. A rich person has access all of these things. I can take this. I can have these people fawning after me. These people, yes, 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 men and women, you know. I don't have to like make my own coffee in the morning. I I can go first class. I can blah, blah, blah. I can take it. But it, it's, it's looking at, if you keep taking things just because you can and you're indulging yourself, then you become like when Napoleon Hill was talking about, like the criminals, where at first you're like, I would never be entitled like that. And then you grow to be entitled and then you're accustomed to being entitled. This is how all of our, if you want to call it sin, sin is to just miss the mark. It, it's a Greek word that means to miss the mark of, of perfection, of perfect love. And so you know addictions are just missing the mark of perfect love they're taking something just because you can and this leads me to the third reason to address your addiction and the third reason why we go to them is um the third reason to address it is because it keeps teaching you to go out there it keeps teaching you your answer to your problem is out there is in another woman is in another drug is in another high is in another making fun of someone else stepping on someone else acting like you love someone and then ditching them you know what i mean um whatever it is those are highs that you've gotten used to oftentimes because trauma has happened to you and you 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 grew a hardened heart in some way that you didn't realize i didn't realize i was addicted to 
trying to please people because that's what I was taught how to get my worth as a child, you know? And so um, I was always a victim in that. I was making myself a victim. They weren't. They were, of course, but I was. I was. When I looked at my own addiction, that's when you can get out of it, right? And so look at how um, when you go to something else, right? Um, it's like I do this thing all the time. Here's a child. Here's a parent, right? Child, parent. When you're a child, you have to, you have to get from the parent. You have to take from the parent. You have to wait for the parent. A two-year-old can't go, I'm going to go make my own mac and cheese. I have to wait for the parent to give me the love, to give me the affection. Hi. You're so lucky to be here. Honestly, my videos get about 35 to 200 views. So if you're here, you're here for a reason. This is coming to you, right? Christ said you are the salt of the earth. If you lose your saltiness, salt preserves. Salt makes everything taste better. You are the light of the world. All this stuff is meant to be cleared out of you so that you can be light to the rest of the world, right? This is coming to you because someone wants you to be free of these addictions, all right? So look, a child has to wait. And so in addictions, this is why they're so deceptive. This is why the devil is called the father of lies because it's a lie. It always promises you something you already have. Look at what I said at the beginning. Get in your beingness. <sighs> know yourself beyond your form. You are a soul in a human body. Know yourself as that. You are God consciousness. You are made out of the substance of God and the image and likeness of God. You are love. You don't need anything else to fill you up or give you worth or tell you what prowess you have, what power you have or whatever. You are love, you are love. But all these addictions, they distract you from the truth of who you already are. Watch my little, my video with the boy and girl on the front that are like the boy is holding the girl. She has this blonde hair. It was just a picture from my office. It will teach you how to get in your beingness. I don't know the name of it. Hopefully I tag it or someone comments about it at the bottom. All right. And so when you're used to being in this child position and having to wait, you're like, oh, you know, forget that. I'm not going to wait for my parents anymore. They kept not showing up for me. I'm going to just take, take, take. You, you, you ought to. It's important as you grow and address your addictions, right? Address them instead of making them your address, you know? Withdraw your energy from them. Look at how you're taking this thing because it gives you a temporary high. And so you have this learned lack of trust because people betrayed our trust in our childhood, right? That's a whole nother story. Like they had free will and they were betrayed and they go into unconsciousness. And so they lead us into it. But I'm teaching you right now how to get out of unconsciousness and be conscious. Stop taking the temporary thing that makes me high but keeps me addicted and keeps me in this child dependent position. Do you want to stay dependent forever or go and be equal? Equal. I wear two adults and I can go in this life. What you're doing is when you keep going to this outer thing, you keep reinforcing this lie that you don't have the power within you, that you have to. And some people think that asking God to help you is going to an, an external thing. And it's like, no, you're asking the divine that you can always be connected with. You're plugging yourself into that, which you came from and you are made out of that substance. So going to God, not in an addictive way, just in a real sincere way and going, help me know how I am the light of the world. If Christ said, I am the light of the world, and he also said, you are the light of the world, you are this already, right? And so the addictions keep you blinded to that. They keep you having this sense of control. And look at all these women I can get, yet none of them stay with you and none of them you have a deep intimate relationship with because you can't develop that when you keep stealing. We're stealing. That's why I brought up the criminals first. That's what got me about this part of that book, you know, is that is that you, we're stealing and we don't need to. You're worth so much more. You're worth the real love. But they taught you by your parents taking shortcuts and like yelling at you. That was a shortcut. They taught you you're not worth the real thing and we can't have it. But you can have it. All my videos, I have like 500 videos already talking about this, teaching this. This is like the gold that, that, um, that made... Lucy's Elixir and, and the Narnia books. People had to die to get this. You don't know how many times I had to die to myself to get this information.
because I love you. All right, much love, share.